Hello once again folks. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Fall to Roivarisht and another instalment of the fly fishing tips. And today I'm going to be chatting to Sean Maher, who will be in this seat right after this. Okay folks, thanks very much for tuning in once again and today I'm joined by Sean Maher, um, two times All-Ireland Fly Fishing Champion and the winner of numerous other um, fly fishing competitions all over the place Sean. Um, where did you, re you represented Ireland twice, where did you go to? Um, I was in Spain for the Europeans and um, Scotland for the World Championships, um, that's a while back now George, it's yeah, but 2007, even so, 2008. But it was nice to do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what were the rivers in Spain like? Um, small rivers mostly, um, kind of mountain streams, um, tough fishing, very low numbers caught, but right. but it was good. It was similar to our small rivers here, you know. Trout so. again, was it? Yeah, yeah, mostly trout. Yeah, yeah. And what about Scotland? In Scotland, the river it was actually mostly lakes, and right. it, was, it was only the River Tay, which is a massive salmon river, so completely different. So did yeah. you catch fish in the Tay? I caught one is all. And drop three, yeah, really? on, the, on the river session, yeah. There was a lot of blanks and very, very low numbers, but right, right. yeah, it was something completely different, yeah, yeah. But and nice how would you river. like? Would say, is there any comparison between the rivers that you fished, say, in Scotland and Spain, and the rivers here? Is that could you compare them at all? Yeah, I, I suppose, particularly one of the rivers in Spain, I suppose, is like it would be very similar to maybe the Anor here or something mm. like that, that kind of size, but would have a very very low population of fish you know yeah, um, yeah. To hard to catch as well are they? hard to catch and work hard to get them you know mm. um do the locals put them under a lot of pressure yeah and, and and i suppose it was it was northern spain so there might have been you know i suppose uh the agricultural practices and that weren't great either so mm. you know the rivers it seemed like maybe a little bit polluted and not, not great, great stocks uh, yeah, yeah, yeah not in yeah. great condition yeah just tough conditions you know it's it's mm. hard to compare to here because yeah, we're yeah, spoiled yeah, you know yeah, so we are spoiled in a sense aren't we really yeah, this, i was going to say how did you ever get into fly fishing how did it all start for you um one one man really his his name is shane fanning i worked with him years ago um god rest him he, he passed away a few years ago um but i actually worked with the guy and he taught me how to tie flies before I ever picked up a fly rod. Really? Yeah. So you yeah. were tying flies before you ever fished? I was tying flies, and there were lake flies, there weren't <laughs> right. river flies. Yeah, yeah. Um, lovely fella, gentleman, um, and just his passion and enthusiasm, it just was contagious. Right. Um, right. He took me up the west of Ireland, sitting in the middle of a boat, um, with, with Neville Howard, another guy that taught me a lot, and sat me in the middle of it with a dapping rod, and mm. caught a trout the same day. And lovely. And that was my first experience, kind of, of... Right. Um, and I suppose, um, I suppose after that was I met yourself a few mm. years after that, and you the shop, and I suppose I learned a lot from you talking in the shop and right. taking me out. A I do of plenty times. of talking, don't I? Yeah, you're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose you you learn a bit off everybody. Like, yeah, of course, but, um, yeah. I suppose just to watch someone catching trout, it just you go off in yourself and you try and learn as much as you can. But, yeah. Um, you know, I suppose uh the one day that I went out with you on the shore and I saw you catching I don't know how many trout mm -hmm. after trout uh, when you were nymph fishing and the same day I caught nutting mm. and I suppose after that I just went to the river Anor and practiced and practiced and practiced and, and eventually you learn that's the way it works it clicks it? you know so mm. but, um, yeah, yeah I, I remember just um, curious little story funny little story here folks I remember taking out Sean He's very. I think this was your very first time. Was it your very? It was your very first time trying to nymph fish anyway, or to well, learn anything? About yeah, yeah. Well, I was trying myself, or didn't know what I was doing. I, yeah. I didn't have anyone to show me. Or I so Sean anyway me. contacted me. He asked me would I show him how to nymph fish, and so I brought him to the river with me. And um, the part of the river we were fishing was fairly strong current now and fairly deep and that you know and fairly tough. And I was explaining something to Sean anyway, and Sean was here this side of me, and I was explaining something to Sean, and I was fishing with him. I looked around and he was gone. And I thought, where, where's he gone? Where could he be? And he was, you were actually under the water. 
<laughs> Most of me was under the water. You stumbled, yeah. but I didn't hear you. I think it might have been windy, but I didn't actually hear you fall into it. was a rough day. And I remember putting my hand out of the catch and you were the back of the neck and pulling your back up. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was your first introduction to nymph fishing. I always put studs in your boots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's it, yeah. And um, you went away and you learned yourself. You taught yourself essentially after that. I, I did, yeah. I, I, like, I suppose I, I learned a lot, like, even talking to, like, as I said, you know, Shane Fanning that I worked with the guy at the time, even though it predominantly a lake angler, mm. he gave me wet flies for the river. He, you know, he taught me how to tie little wet flies and I'd go out and try it and, and yourself about nymphs, you taught me about nymphs and, mm-hmm. you know, and just, uh, I used to try first of all with two nymphs, trying to throw them upstream and catch mm. a few trout and didn't work for me. So I just decided I'm fishing one from now on. Yeah. And that's how I learned, just fishing one. And yeah. Fly line and lead float on top of the water and, and I suppose, the, anor, the river Anor just taught me a lot because yeah. it's, it's tough enough. And it's a difficult river to catch yeah, fishing, yeah, there's no um, doubt. So, and, and going into you and buying a few bits and talking to people, at, you know, Shane and Neville at work and um, meeting people on the river, you learn a bit off everybody. Like, there's, yeah. there's nobody you won't learn off of. You learn Absolutely, everybody. Yeah. You can even learn from newcomers. Yeah, yeah. A, a, anyone, you yeah. know. You yeah. pick up hints off everybody. Like, yeah. it's, um, you know, there's... And you need someone to help you out because you can't start out on your own. And yeah, you're kind of bewildered a bit, wouldn't you? You're yeah, kind of yeah. overcome by it all. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. overwhelmed in a sense. Yeah, it's it's. I suppose I, I I was trying to fly fish even before I started nymph fishing, and my first trout was on a wet fly, and that was just over the old bridge in Clonmel. Yeah. I just tried there, and it was a little green with glory, and it was actually Shane tied it for me. But mm. and it was ever since then. Then I suppose it was just kind of hooked, but. Yeah, that's coincidental yeah. now. My first ever trout on a fly was on a Greenwell's Glory wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. Great old fly. A, br- a brown sink, some, was it a, some kind of sinking line I had that he gave me in <laughs> his se- seven weight rod? Um, yeah. But yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and like then you, day, you started into the competition scene. Yeah, I suppose I, I was only fishing a few years. I, I didn't start fly fishing, George, till I was 29, you know, really? so it was a very late comer to it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I worm fished in that when I was younger, the same as a lot of kids, yeah. you know. Mm. I'm from Glenwood originally, so I used to go to a little stream in Ballinunty and we used to fish over there. And mm-hmm. um, But no, I was 29 when I came to it, so very, very late. But it was just by joining the local clubs, the Anor, Golden, um, that, you know, the lads say, you know, come along to the competitions and then you meet mm. more people and you learn a bit off everybody. And, you know, like this, you know, even you, you know, Tony Quigley, even, mm. you know, and people like that, and yeah. Norm Regan and... Um, people that would help you along as you start yeah. out and um but you very quickly became successful in competitions didn't you i i know I, I wouldn't say that no no I, I i suppose um i just put in a lot of time like you know and, mm. and um i started doing okay like in the competitions but um yeah i suppose if you're if you're competitive you kind of try and i suppose mm. it was probably a bit competitive but um yeah and i and i, I don't think it was i think it was mostly down to the fact that um if you were able to nymph fish a little bit, yeah. you'd normally catch a few more trout than other people. And yeah. I think, I think that's probably why you know because yeah. everybody wasn't nymph fishing, you know. Yeah, so that's right. I think that's the main reason that you mm. you do pretty okay in mm. competitions, you know. So and what I what I noticed about you and your fishing, I watched you on a couple of occasions. Is you have infinite patience. It appears to me like. I watched you on the river and like I'd be if I when I used to fish competitions which is quite a long time ago I'd move very quickly from place to place let's assume we were fishing I had a two mile stretch of water to fish I might fish that three or four times in the day yeah. because I'd be up and down so fast and yes I watched you fishing and you're you're very slow and methodical you go through a place and you fish virtually every inch of it I'd say yeah I, I'm very slow which doesn't help in some cases like yeah. you know you were talking to Dave Dun- Donovan recently and you know the competition in Thomastown you have a lot of water and mm. you have to cover it and, and like it doesn't suit that kind of fishing because mm. I'm too bloody slow but y- you have to uh, you know you have to learn but it, it does suit the Anna a small river because yeah. you don't want to frighten anything and yeah. it's yeah. how you approach it so it's probably because of the Anna that I fish so slowly that you're taking that's, your time that's, uh, that's uh, very interesting now how you developed that slow technique, the river, the river taught you to be slow. Yeah, I, I, I think so anyway. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's very good because, like you say, if you if you rush through a place like a small river like that, you're likely to scare more fish than you're ever likely to fish for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you see them scattered in front of you. Of course you, know. you do. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, you go step by step, and I suppose you applied that then as you went into the other rivers. Yeah, yeah. You developed a habit, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um, 
No, I, I love small rivers, you know, and, and the big rivers are great as well, and you mm. might catch more trout, and you, you get away with maybe not, you know, you don't have to go as slow or be as careful, mm. but it, it's just, it, it's, I just love small rivers, and you know, the yeah, yeah, the yeah. or any small river, you know, the bride below even, or where, anywhere at all, you yeah. know, it's, um, it, it's great in the summer because, uh, you know, and a lot of people are probably the same, you know, when the water is low and the sun is shining and mm. you can see the trout, it, it's, yeah. It's just brilliant sight fishing to a trout. Yeah, you know, you might not catch them, you might frighten yeah, them. Yeah, it's nice to see them. That's that's my favourite part, yeah, yeah, if you can see them, you know. You see, see their reaction to the fly. Yeah, yeah, or learn to slow down and, you know, I won't do that the next day or I'll come in at a different angle, you know. Yeah, but yeah, you learn from every occasion, don't you? Yeah, no, it's it's, it's good, but mm. it's, um, yeah. It's and is nipping your favourite method? Um, I, I I don't know if it's my favourite. I'd say for the last last couple of years what I've done a lot of is dry dropper fishing um, mm. you know the and little yeah. tiny clink camera and a small bead and I suppose you know people taught me how to do that as well because I didn't know how to do it and yeah. you know Tom Beach or Dave Donovan lots of other people you know that helped me out in the last few years and and I love that I'd say 90% of my fishing the last few years is that I just love mm-hmm. it and I, I think it works really really well especially for a competition I yeah. think um, but if if I was an infant I prefer a single nymph yeah and yeah. Um, dry dropper technique. Yeah, and and dry dropper is my favorite. But if you have to nymph fish and that's the type of water in a competition, mm. yeah, I prefer a single nymph, which obviously you can't do everywhere. But it's, yeah. it's just nice fishing, and yeah, um, yeah. It, it, I suppose there's no there's no quick answer. It's the water in front of you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, so. And do you dry fly fish at all? I do a little bit, not much. I suppose I. I I haven't even fished in probably several years, you know. I was only out once this year with a friend of mine, um, and I suppose I haven't done as much dry fly fishing, you know. And yeah. that's a shame because that's how I started out, was always evening fishing, you mm-hmm. know, even even talking to yourself in the shop, you, you know, tie flies, go home and try and copy them and yeah. go out and, you know, the, the blueing dollars and that. And the shore, when I was in the Clombell Club, great fishing down there in the blueing dollars, mm-hmm. same up here in Golden. The anna or the hatches wouldn't be as good, yeah, but that's right, you yeah. still get some nice trout, you know, mm-hmm. the average mm-hmm. size would be better. But no, I, I, I haven't done as much dry fly fishing, particularly the last few years. Right. I don't spend as much time fishing now as what I did when yeah, I started yeah, out. Yeah, I might yeah, only yeah. get out once or twice a week, so right. um, I, I think you need to be out as much as possible, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to keep sharp. You're still tying flies, you are? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm not a great... Um, I'm not great at time flies, George, but I just keep them simple and, you know, s- small nymphs and clean cameras and little dries and... Whatever works. Yeah, yeah um, I, I, I don't do much wet fly fishing anymore. Um, I did a little bit in Thomastown. Um, didn't have much success on it, but I fished, yeah. you know, wrong type of water. But, um, mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's it's just trying different things, I suppose. And, yeah. You know, so, like, but just say, for instance, that you go to the river, would you have a presupposed plan of attack, we'll say... Yeah, if you were going to the river, say, oh, "Well, I'm going to fish dry dropper," or would you make that decision based on what's going on or that you'd see happening around you? I, I, I suppose up until a while ago, I, I nearly set up the rod of the car and go down. But now I normally go down and have a look and right, what am I going to do today? But mm. as I said, I, I just I just love dry dropper fishing at the moment, and then just trying different things with that and different yeah. depths and smaller flies and and. Mm. and and I think you need to practice whatever technique it is. You need to try different things with it to try and get a bit of confidence in it. You mightn't be the best in the world, but if you get a bit of confidence mm-hmm. in it, then you know when you do need to use it. I, I get a few trout in it, you know, and you're, yeah. you're happy with that, you know. Right. Um, say flies now, for instance. I I'd be of the mind to say we fish more or less the same rivers and that sort of thing, and it seems to work universally for me anyway. Is Catching you catch I, I tend to catch more fish on smaller the smaller the fly I, the, the more fish I catch. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, well, um, definitely. Um, uh, without a doubt, um, like size twenty one and a half two mil bead if it's a nymph. It, there, mm. like there's days there when you if you're fishing whether it's dry dropper and you have a small two and a half mil bead and you get an mm. odd trout, you switch over to something smaller and it's like flicking a switch. It's yeah, just, yeah. Mm. It, it's um. So, so you, you learn a lot every time and you realise shit I'm, maybe I'm a, I was a little bit too lazy I should have changed yeah. earlier and yeah, yeah. some days you're kicking yourself you know, mm-hmm. um, you know uh, particularly in low water now I find that the smaller nymphs yeah, work, yeah. work way better than in, I would say typically now in, in low water summer conditions size 20 even 22 sometimes yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they're the ones that really work I haven't gone to the 22s yet but yeah, well, yeah, the never, too, never too late to start yeah, never too late to start yeah no no it's it's and it's it's good it, it's nice to go to the river in the summer and it's really low because yeah. there's very few people fishing and you That's get right. some really nice trout oh, in shallow water it's, absolutely um, yeah 
and you'll even see them when the sun yeah, but you shining. need to be on top of your game when you're fishing in the, the yeah water. I know you'll frighten a lot of them but if you get yeah. an odd one it's, it's it's really satisfying like yeah that's why you don't see so many people fishing in those conditions yeah yeah it is it's yeah, a it's, sun cream day it's like not easy it. <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. easy but it's a good challenge anyway um just talk about gear like I have done with everybody else <coughs> do you put a lot of store in gear do you think that for instance that a particular rod is going to improve your chances or would any rod do you or that sort of thing what's your thoughts on that um i, I suppose i'm like a lot of people i am gone to lighter gear you know two weights and three weights and and um i, I suppose it was I, I was fishing a four weight for a lot of years and um, probably probably before a lot of people even got but um mm. and you know i and even built my own four weight for rod with, with help my friend rink vanderville there several years ago and i had that for a long time and i loved it for um and there's just so many advances like now you know I, they're all two weights you know maybe yeah. and fish a three weight floating line on it and mm. they're just really soft rods and it's yeah you can fish you can fish most methods on them light rods you obviously can, yeah. wet fly fishing needs something a little bit you know yeah it's the big advantage of modern gear so light isn't it yeah no it's uh, and yeah. listen I, I don't i don't spend a fortune on gear and anyone knows me is the same just you know yeah. a couple of hundred or a few hundred quid on a decent rod that's enough you know um yeah you know and uh yeah it's more it's more getting a bit closer to the fish and take your time and you know yeah that's um, it yeah yeah this, i uh, constantly preach that get as close as you can and then get five yards closer yeah yeah but <laughs> well, the, the main reason i was doing is my casting was terrible so i didn't yeah, I, I'm not a good better. caster either yeah <laughs> so yeah. yeah it makes it easier to of course it does yeah Mo most of mine is throwing rather than casting yeah <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it works anyway that's the main thing now sean the season is closed currently um Will you do anything fishing wise during the close season? Um, I, I, I suppose I normally do is I might I, I might do a little bit of stocky bashing maybe two or three times over the winter, but right. obviously now with the shutdown, COVID, that's not going to happen this year. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I would. I two or three times I go, but my my passion is the river, obviously. But it's yeah. nice to meet the lads and mm. you know maybe go to Adair Springs or something a couple of times. But right. yeah, and I, I I'm no expert in that at all. I'm learning yeah. learning a bit off of. Kevin Lafford, a friend of mine who fished with me in Thomastown, mm -hmm. so learned a lot off him the last few years. And right. um, but yeah, I I think that it's good in the winter if you can meet the lads, you know. Yeah, guys, just, yeah, you keep in touch. Yeah, keep in touch. Mm -hmm. I I suppose a lot of guys go hunting in the winter, and I know yeah. you do a bit yourself. So mm -hmm. I don't have that. So it's nice to meet up with the lads mm -hmm. for a bit of fishing, you know. Or I took you hunting uh, once, didn't I? You did once, yeah, yeah. Deer um, stalking, wasn't it? That's right. You shot a deer, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. That's um. <laughs> Not not for me, I'm afraid. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be yeah. gory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. Um, but no, I, I stick. To, I stick to the fishing for the moment, anyway. And just um, what out of the rivers that you fished with, say, I suppose it won't be difficult for you to choose your favourite. No, no, it's not difficult. It's it's the Anner. The, the Anner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Anner is a beautiful river. Yeah. Just has everything and great quality fish and. Um, and always a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it's always a challenge, and I, I, I know we all talk about the decline of the rivers and pollution and and mm. you know and agricultural practices and, um, you know, but like, and I suppose people disagree, but you know, I think the fishing has improved over the years. I agree with you. I, I, I yeah, I, I think it's got better. I think, <laughs> yeah, agree. I think there's more despite, in the river. But that's despite the what's going on with pollution and all the rest. Yeah, of it. yeah. I yeah. that that is definitely an issue. But our fishing has, without question, improved in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and I don't think it's because everybody got better at fishing. I just think there's more. <laughs> no, it, it genuinely does. You can see it. You know, you can see the quantities of fish in the river. You know. It's, yeah, it is. There's plenty of them there. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's um, great. No, it's is. Uh, it is good, all right. <laughs> all right, Sean. Just to wind it up, I have one final question for you, um, for the the viewers. Your two tips that you would give a beginner. Um, I suppose the first one is join a club, um, yeah. your local club if you can, and try. I suppose try make friends with someone that's you know, um, a competent angler that you know that will take you out, give you a little bit of time. Um, mm. it's. It's worth it's worth a fortune to see somebody on the river, catching a few trout, give you their bit of experience, and and even if you can't do it, then it just gives you, you know you know in principle what to do. Then I suppose yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's, mm. it's it's a massive help. Yeah, it's yeah. um, that's that's definitely, you know, and, and obviously as you get a little bit better, it's it's looking after the piece of water in front of you, you know, and mm. that's it. Um, but you learn in time. Just put in the hours, and you know you learn in time, like so. Right, Sean, thanks very much indeed. Really appreciate you coming out here today. 
I really enjoyed the chat. Cheers. There we are, folks. That was Sean Maher and um, and uh, kind to reach the bar ball in Bjog. So there you go, folks. That was Sean Maher and uh, that was a nice chat. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, be sure to subscribe. That way you'll be notified of any future videos. And thanks very much again for watching. And good evening on Keodorella. Biggie Slain, August Gadesh of Slain.